This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Well, today we are discussing how 50 Cent single-handedly destroyed Dipset. Now, some of you might not agree with me, but some of you will agree with me, maybe after I spell it out for you. I mean, it's just something that happened, and it's not all 50 Cent's doing, but he was the person that put the seed in there to kind of break it all apart. Um, even if you disagree with me, stay tuned, hit that like button, and let's let's go through this little journey. Okay, so we got Cameron, the head of Dipset. He built it up. You know, he came out with his uh, Confessions of Fire SDE album, then went over to uh, Rockefeller, dropped Come Home With Me. After that, Dipset was on fire. He introduced Joel Santana. Uh, they had Diplomatic Immunity. Uh, the Diplomats albums, uh, and, you know, he was introducing everybody in his crew. Cameron put a lot of people on, okay? He put on Joel Santana. He put on Jim Jones. He put on Freaky Ziki. He put all his people on. He put on Hell Rel. He put on uh, J.R. Ryder, 40 Cal. He put all these people. He introduced all these people to the world. Dipset was the crew in New York along with G-Unit, okay? Now... What happened was Cameron was dropping albums and Joel's was dropping albums. They were both on, you know, uh, Rockefeller De uh, Def Jam. Okay. I think Joel Santana had a straight deal with Def Jam. Cameron had uh, Rockefeller Def Jam. Okay. So they were rocking. Now, Jim Jones never got put out by Rockefeller or Def Jam, he ended up going to Koch Records. Um, around 04 and dropped his album and that's when you know Ballin and everything came like a year or two later but first he had that album then he had another album after that which really blew up with the whole Ballin okay so now you get first you had the On My Way to Church album then I think on Hustler's Poem if I'm correct on 06 he had Ballin this is when shit got crazy okay because now you got Jim Jones has always been with Cameron and kind of running Dipset with Cameron, he's coming into his own. He's got his own. He's the guy now. Like he had a little bit more juice in 06 than Cameron, meaning he had hit records out. Okay. So, you know, you get behind balling, you know, uh, and, you know, Max B, Stack Bundles was down with Jim Jones. He was moving with his own crew, Bird Gang, but still Dipset. But there was a little friction there, okay? Because whenever you get the guy that's the underling, like a Jim Jones, and kind of comes into his own and feels like he has as much power as Cameron, it creates a little tension, just at least for a little bit until everything kind of evens out. Joel Santana kind of always played his place as the artist. He liked being the artist. Eventually, he had his own crew, Skull Gang, but, you know, he, he liked being dipset. And there was a little tension between Jim and Cameron. Well, what broke this up is when... Jim Jones was up in Harlem filming a video uh, off his album. Uh, I think it was Poem. I forget what it was called, man. But I, I think it, it was the church. I was there for this video. I was filming the behind the scenes. I was with Joel Santana. And we went over there. He was doing his part. And I remember this like yesterday. Okay, so I guess 50 Cent was on the radio at this time. And he was, you know, airing everybody out, blah, blah, blah. But... Alan, uh, they were talking, he was talk, kind of talking down about Koch, like Koch is like a graveyard for ours to go and everything. And Alan Grunblack gassed Cameron up to call 50 and start like a little beef, okay? I don't know if it was just Alan Grunblack. So the story I hear is that Alan Grunblack gave uh, him like two S550s, but that might be a fairy tale. Plus... Cameron was probably with it too because he's about album sales too. So they started a beef with 50 calling up, kind of defending the Koch territory. Like, hey, we're selling units up here. Jim Jones is up here selling 300,000 on indie, and you guys are a major selling that much, you know? So he called up. So th this is the infamous call right here where he called up and they had a little beef, okay? Somebody's on the phone. Who is it, Mom? Who is it? Alan Cameron and Aaron, Alan, Alan Run, Run, Black. Run Black from um, Koch Records. Cameron. Cameron? Let's talk. What's your relationship with Cam? Do you have, have one? Problems. We good. No problems. Yeah, I ain't had no issues with him. Thinking what up. about me, Alan? What's that? What about me? Hi. How you doing? Doing good. <laughs> you want to talk? You want to be in the air? That's like good. an artist? 
Hey, yeah, you know what? You know, just because I've been just hearing a lot of negativity and, you know, Koch Records, we distribute Diplomat Records and, uh, you know... We yeah, well, Diplomat's are cool, and, but put Cam on the phone. Diplomat Records and we pay them... Put Cam on the phone. And, and, you know... You know, put Cameron on the phone. Listen, let me explain something to you. No, I'm no, saying no, to you, I got no, projects over there. I got. You just I just allowed. I just signed there. off. I just signed you just off. Did to, prodigy deal right. Over there, I just you? let him do that deal. Huh? Hey, what is Lloyd Banks finish that? How much Lloyd Banks owe? Well, Lloyd Banks is at three hundred thousand. And he's on a major. Jim is at three hundred thousand. Right, right. And, and that's great for Jimmy. But Jimmy's not. Listen up. That's great for Jimmy. Jimmy Bob deep sell this year. You're not gonna be. You're gonna be caught for a whole different situation. Watch this. So I was with Joel Santana and Jim Jones when this happened. I remember when this radio call went down because Jim Jones, Joel Santana, and Freaky Ziki all went to the back of this church and they were talking and you could tell that they were kind of like blindsided by this whole beef that happened with Cameron and 50 Cent. And remember... 50 Cent had just destroyed Ja Rule's career not too many years before this and had been like hurting careers of Fat Joe and Jada Kiss, just going back at them. And he was just steamrolling over people. So, and Jim Jones was at the height of his career at this time. So it was like, damn, he didn't even know about this that was going to go down. He wasn't prepared and he was worried that, hey, this is going to affect my career right now. So I remember the tension. They went in the back and talked this over. I knew things weren't right. Then, just a week later, this is when YouTube was pretty new, okay? 50 Cent released a video on YouTube, and so did Cameron. And they go videos going at each other. Cam, I mean, I, I was being nice to him. Okay, I'll get him. You niggas should worship the ground I walk on. I'll make meals off the tracks I talk on. Jimmy's the boss of Dipset. And Joel is the capo. Cam's promoted to show. We like Jimmy better anyway. Even Mike, huh. believe me, ho. You can't see me, though. Jimmy ain't the president. He the CEO. Zeke is the president. It's evident. He'll cock his spray. Now, notice how 50 Cent, during that song, reorganized Dipset, telling Cameron that he's irrelevant in Dipset. Jim Jones is the head of Dipset. Just, it was fueling a tension that already existed. He knew this. And he got in their minds and he kind of fueled a tension between Jim Jones and Cameron. And Joel's kind of just played in the middle. He didn't take any sides, right? Um, Joel's was already in limbo because he was waiting to get off Def Jam. Because now, remember, Jay-Z was the head of Def Jam at this time. They didn't get along with Jay-Z. And Joel's was kind of shelved at this time. He didn't want to be on Def Jam. And he was kind of just waiting it out, okay? So then this is, this is the ultimate point where you kind of saw where everything stood between Jim Jones and Cameron, okay? 50 Cent was hosting a show, and guess what? And I'm back. It's your boy 50 Cent bringing you more Rap City. It's going down right here. I know this is your favorite show right now because I'm on it. And I told y'all earlier I was going to bring somebody new in the G-Unit. I might have a new sign and I might not. You see, I got the whole G-Unit here. We're going to get it going. What you got back there? Oh, oh man. Hey. What you know? What you know? What you know? What you it's your man Jim Jones right here. Bought you the biggest record of last year, right? Oh, yeah, we had a what, nice what song last year. What we call that one? What we call that one? That was balling. We still balling. Yeah, yeah. What's about to say, baby? Yes, sir. It's balling. You know, so... Oh, no, man, we got to... So why, why was you here? Right? Well, we got to do that one time. Tell me how to show you how you do it. Yeah, you got to you pass me a now, this was the ultimate betrayal at this point because he was siding with 50 Cent in the beef. And it kind of drove a wedge in Dipset. And Dipset was split at this point. Cameron was doing him. Jim Jones is doing him. Joel's is doing him. There was no unity in Dipset anymore. And it just kind of fell apart from this point. They tried to make a reunion happen a few years ago. Obviously, that failed. And we know what happened recently between Cameron and Jim Jones. Them calling each other out and everything. And, you know, it was just a mess. So, basically... That was the end of Dipset right there. When Jim Jones went on that show with 50 Cent during the beef, it showed that he was cool with it. He was siding with 50 Cent, not siding with Cameron. 
And that was the end because we always pictured Cameron and Jimmy are the glue and dip set. You know, those the those are the brothers right there. And it kind of ruined what we had. Remember at this time, Cameron had disappeared after this point because his I think his mom got sick. So he went to go take care of her. Her mom, his mom got sick at that time and he had to go take care of her. And, you know, he wasn't worried about this shit anymore. You know, family first. Right. But uh, that was the end of Dipset right there. That was it. You know, uh, of course, Cameron's always a legend. Jim Jones is always a legend. Joel's is always a legend. You got Hell Rail Jarrah, right? They're all legends in their own. But I'm just saying, as a collective dip set, that crews end at one point. Like G Unit ended at one point. You know, when Game and Buck and all of them were breaking off, that was the end of G Unit as we knew it. You know, that's the end of Dipset as we knew it. But it's always like it was a moment in time. All right, hit the like button. Appreciate you guys. Peace.